In this session, we're going to look at how we can create cross-section views in an external file. On my screen is a drawing that represents a corridor model of an intersection. Generally speaking, I've got a couple of major alignments in here. I've got a north-south alignment called Primary Street, and then I've got an east-west alignment called Secondary Street. Let me zoom in a little bit and I'll center this. What we see here is not a single corridor model. It's actually several corridors. Right here, I have a corridor that represents Primary Street. And then my secondary street's been broken up into multiple corridors. This portion represents secondary street west approach. I've got another piece here for the blend, tying it into primary street. Over here is the blend area for the east side, and then I've got the secondary street east approach corridor. I have also created top surfaces for each of these corridor models. If I click, I can select some of these so you can see them on screen. So I've created a top surface for each of these as well. Let me press escape. I'll back up. There is another surface model in this drawing. Right here is the existing condition surface. Currently, this is displaying using a border only style. Let me zoom back in. At this point, I'd like to create some cross section views of this design. I'd like to create those cross section views along Primary Street. Historically, you might just pull those section views in this drawing, the one that contains the corridor model, because it's easy. The data is already here. Actually, we don't have to do that. I can create those section views in a completely separate file. Let's take a look. I'm going to start by creating a new drawing. I'll open the application menu. I'll click New, and I'll select a Civil 3D template, and I'll click Open. To pull cross sections in this file, the only thing that I have to have is my alignment. Let me mention that I have already created a data shortcut to the primary street alignment. So let me come over to the Prospector tab. I'm going to pull down to the bottom to the data shortcuts area. I have already ensured that the appropriate project is current. Let me open up the Alignments category. I'll choose Center Line Alignments. And right here is my Primary Street Alignment. I'll right-click on that and I'll choose Create Reference. I'm going to keep the default style settings and I'll click OK. I will then double-click the mouse wheel to do a zoom extents. So right there is the Primary Street Alignment. Next, we'll XREF the corridor drawing. I'll type XREF and press Enter. In the External References dialog box, I will click to reference a DWG. I'll select that corridor drawing we just looked at and I'll click Open. In the Attach External Reference dialog box, I am going to bring in this reference via Overlay, and then I'll leave these boxes unchecked, because I'd like the drawing to come in at the same size, rotation, and coordinates as the original drawing. I'll click OK. Now that I've brought in the XREF, I will click to close the External References dialog box, and then I'm going to push this drawing to the back. Let me select that XREF, and I'll right-click. From the menu, I'll come down to Display Order, and I'll choose Send to Back. This will make it a little easier for me to select my alignment in just a minute. To create the cross-section views, we have to make sample lines first. Here on the Home tab in the Profile and Section Views panel, I'll click the Sample Lines button. I will then select that alignment that I brought in via the data shortcut. And take a look at this. Civil 3D is going to let me sample all of the data that's coming along from that XREF corridor drawing. You can see the existing ground surface. You can see the various corridor models as well as the surfaces. Since I'm in this dialog box, I am going to take this opportunity to select the styles I want to use in my section views. So I will hold my control key and I will select each of these corridor models. And then I'll click in the style column and I'll choose the code set style I want to use in my cross section views. I'm going to choose Autodesk Sections Plot and I'll click OK. I will then hold my control key and I'll select each of these top surfaces. I'll click in the style column and I'll choose the section style I'd like to use in my cross section views. I'm going to go with Autodesk Prop. I'll click OK and OK. Now that I've chosen my styles, I need to tell Civil 3D where I want to place the sample lines. I'll do that by opening this menu on the right side of the toolbar, and I'll choose By Range of Stations. I'm going to stick with the default swath width of 90 feet to the left and right, so these cross-section views will essentially be 180 feet long. I would like to have a 50-foot increment along tangents, curves, and spirals. That'll be good for now. When I'm finished, I'll come down and click OK. I will then press Enter to finish the sample line command. Once the sample lines are created, we'll back up and take a look. So the cross-section views will be placed at the location of each of these sample lines. To create the cross-section views, first we'll set the scale. This is the nice thing. Since I'm pulling these section views in a separate file, I can set the scale of this to anything I want, because none of this geometry that we see is going to be printed. Only the cross-section views will be. I'm going to go with a horizontal scale of 1 inch equals 10 feet. So let me open the annotation scale menu, and I'll choose 1 inch equals 10. Let's zoom out, and I'll pan up to give myself some room. To create the section views, here in the Profile and Section Views panel, I'll open the Section Views menu, and I'll choose Create Multiple Views. I'm going to create these views along the Primary Street alignment using my Primary Street Sample Line group. 
I'm gonna keep the default name. For the view style, I'll choose the 10 and five plottable style. This represents the cross-section grid that'll be used. I'll click next. For section placement, I'm going to go with production. This will place the section views in a nice pattern that'll fit on each of my title blocks. I can then click the ellipsis button and select the template that I'd like to use that includes that title block. That template's already selected and I can see the title block right here, cross section 10. Let me click OK. I can then choose the group plot style. This controls the distance between the columns and rows of my section views. I'm going to choose Autodesk Group Plot and I'll click Next. Here we can assign the width of the section views. You can see it's adding an extra five feet to the left and right. That's fine. Let me click Next. Here we assign the height of the views. I'm going to leave this set to automatic. That way the height is dictated by the data. Let me click Next. Here's where I can see all of that data that I'm sampling. I've already assigned styles for these. This would give me a second chance, if you will, to change these if I want to. I'm going to keep them all the way they are. Let me click Next. Finally, Data Bands. This will take care of the labels along the bottom of the section views. I'm going to go with the Autodesk Band Set, and I'll click Create Section Views. I will then click to place these here at the top of my drawing. Let's zoom in. And right here we can see my intersection geometry. I've got some nice looking views here. If I zoom in a little bit closer, here we can see the corridor model that was sampled. We can see that top surface that was sampled right here, as well as the existing ground surface. I've got nice labels for my pavement grades, as well as my lane elevations and offsets. So when it comes to creating cross-section views, we do not have to create them in the same drawing that contains our corridor model. We can pull these in a separate file if we want to. And that's because Civil 3D will allow us to sample data through an external reference.